I'm not a college student. I can't join a fraternity. I have a life and responsibilities. But that doesn't mean I don't have dreams. Online, on campus, anywhere. Strayer University works around your schedule. The world expects me to sacrifice the next four years. The world doesn't know what works for me. Strayer University gives you the power to learn anywhere, decide your schedule, and define your future. I'm not just a college student. I am a Strayer student. Over 100,000 graduates, over 120 years of making it possible. Strayer University. Find out more at Strayer.edu today. Strayer University has nine campuses in the state of Georgia, including the Morrow Campus at 3000 Corporate Center Drive, Suite 100 in Morrow, Georgia. Find out how to make your master's or bachelor's degree possible with classes on campus and online at Strayer.edu. Strayer University is certified to operate by CHEV. Blog Talk Radio. Good morning and welcome to the Parenting Aces radio show on Blog Talk Radio's UR Tennis Network. I'm your host, Lisa Stone, and I'm so excited about today's conversation on supplement use for junior tennis players. We have back with us registered dietitian Jeff Rothschild, and Jeff's coming at us from the West Coast, where I just got back from. Um, And I have to say, the weather was perfect while I was there. I got in some beautiful hiking. It was a non tennis trip for me. I was with my non-tennis daughter out there, so, um, but uh, just enjoyed myself immensely and am already looking forward to my next trip back out to LA and uh, really can't wait. But, um, so, enough about that. Uh, (laughs) I want to just remind you guys that registration is still open for our Saul Schwartz Save College Tennis All-In Tournament. And if you need more information on that tournament, you can go to the Parenting Aces Facebook page and you'll see a pinned post post at the top with a link to the tournament webpage. And also, if um, it's easier for you to call or email me for that link, I'm happy to send it out. But the tournament is open to all juniors ages 18 and under. We are doing selection and seeding using UTR. And the winner of both the boys' and girls' draws are getting a one-year equipment and clothing sponsorship from Wilson Tennis, which is so amazing. And this whole thing is being presented by Hollabird Sports. So a huge thank you to Hollabird. A huge thank you to TennisBalls.com, who has also come in as a sponsor. And we're looking forward to a great event, August 20th and 21st in the Baltimore area. So if you're going to be up there, let me know, and we will definitely meet and maybe share a cup of coffee or something better than that. Um, All right. So without any further delay, let me bring Jeff on the line, and let's jump right into this conversation Jeff, thanks so much for being here today. Welcome, and sorry to get you up and out so early this morning. (laughs) No problem. I'm happy to be here. Well, this whole topic of supplement use in junior athletes is pretty controversial, and the NCAA has a list of banned substances. Of course, the International Olympic Committee has a list of banned substances. But interestingly, USTA doesn't, as far as I know, really doesn't take a stance one way or another. I mean, obviously they're they're against illegal supplement use in juniors, but I I have never heard or seen um, a case of a junior player being um, scrutinized in any way, shape, or form by USTA, which I find interesting, though I suppose the ITF has its rules and regulations as well. So I'm I'm really interested to hear your take on supplement use with our junior players and how you determine whether it's appropriate for a junior to start using supplements, how to choose a supplement, what the various supplements are capable of accomplishing. And um, so, yeah, I'm going to just let you share your vast knowledge with us this morning. Cool. Okay. Well, that's, you, you bring up a lot of good questions. Um, I guess first, just off the bat, uh, uh, 
someone's health history should, of course, always be considered with a healthcare practitioner before beginning any supplement. So this is something I do in, in person. And, you know, we go through what someone is currently taking in, what their, their needs are, what their goals are, and, and all that kind of uh, those things. So interactions with medications, you know, there's a lot of, of um, nuances to consider. So definitely someone shouldn't just go to the store and buying any supplement without, you know, consulting with someone. So with that being said, uh, yeah, there's there's a lot of potential reasons to supplement. There's a lot of good reasons to avoid supplementing. Um, the obvious would thing to to definitely also say is that it it a supplement can't replace a good diet. It can't replace good sleep. Um, the amount of uh, difference, uh, you know, the, the the difference that a good sleep can make is so much greater than any supplement could do. You know, for example, if you if you cut your uh, sleep short to five hours for a few nights in a row. You'll see the guys will see horm uh, hormones decreasing like testosterone. The studies look at serving accuracy decreases, uh, tennis hitting accuracy. All these things decrease uh, or increase with sleep in such such greater to a such greater magnitude than a supplement can do. Now, with that being said, I think I think too many people will just say, you know, let's just worry about food and sleep and, and ignore the supplements because I think there still is a place for a smart supplement, especially if someone is trying to really go to the next level, whether that's a top a high level junior trying to get into a, or play at a D1 school or, or trying to make the leap to the tour, I think there is some benefit. Um, there are definitely some things that can help. Um, Great. I guess. How, yeah, so, how, young oh, is, how young is too young? Well, that's a good question. I mean, if you think about it, so many young children are taking a Flintstones vitamin or these gummy multivitamins and things like that. And, and whether or not that's a good thing can be debated. Um, but, but, you know, there's, it's not like, okay, we get to a certain age and then we're quote supplementing, you know, um, omega-3 supplements again can have a, or probiotics and vitamin D. These are all things that children can and do take. So, you know, it really depends on the individual situation. Um, if we think about just the, the different reasons to supplement, there could be inadequate dietary intake. So maybe it's magnesium. So a lot of people don't take in adequate amounts of magnesium or probiotics. So a lot of people aren't eating uh, fermented foods or, or yogurt or things like that. So probiotics could potentially be a good thing at almost literally any age. Then though, moving towards the sports area, we have increased needs due to training. So a lot of uh, athletes will need more, for example, B vitamins or iron or zinc or carbohydrate, which maybe they're not able to meet uh, via via food. Um, and then taking it another step further, recovery benefits. So someone who's training hard a couple of times a day might uh, benefit from some carbohydrate supplement, like a shake or some protein uh, in between sessions. If you know if someone's on the court for two 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 hour sessions or two two to three hour sessions, um, there could be some real benefit there. And then again, there's performance benefits. There are a few things that can improve, uh, like your re repeated sprint ability or, or things that are beneficial to a tennis player. So there is a real, a real continuum of things um, that that may or may not be beneficial depending on the situation. So when we say supplement, that's really a very large category that involves or that includes multivitamins, um, you know, individual vitamins. Uh, yeah, protein and, you know, shakes, protein. carbohydrate shakes, exactly. all those things. Yeah, so a lot of people don't even say, you know, might say they're not taking any supplements, but then they're taking, oh, protein or I'm taking a multivitamin. Yeah, these are all included, and they all have similar concerns with, with regards to uh, cross-contamination or, or uh, banned substances and, and um, things like that. Maybe we should first, uh, we should take a, a side detour and talk about some of the potential dangers of supplements. Uh, and why, and the things to look out for. That sounds perfect. Um, yeah, let's do, so the, the the biggest offenders seem to be uh, in the the bodybuilding supplements and the the weight loss and the sexual enhancement. So these this this these are the ones that are more likely to be to have things in the bottles that aren't listed on the label, um, be cross contaminated, have have things that might be a banned substance, um, and so there are ways to be smart about the supplements you do choose. So there's some apps and there's some, there's uh, some third party, there's some companies that their job is to test supplements that are to be sure that they're free of banned substances. 
and that there's label accuracy, meaning what's, if it says it has 20 grams of protein, there should be 20 grams of protein, nothing more, nothing less, things like that. So maybe uh, that's a good place to start. And there's two that are really the, the go-tos, and they're, one is called NSF Certified for Sport, and that's a free website that anyone can go to. And you can put, you can search for certified products. And if you find, so if you're looking for a, a protein, let's say, and you go in that something that has that stamp on it, then you know, as, as, as best as we can know, I mean, there's never a 100% guarantee, but the best you know, place, the best resource we have as sports dietitians, as athletes, as coaches are these type of re- reliable third party sources. So again, NSF certified for sport, and you can search by, you know, you can look for a multivitamin, you can look for really anything. And if they've put their stamp on it, again, then you can be as, as sure as you can be that there's not going to be anything else in there. And again, that it's going to say what it contains and, and that there's nothing banned in there. Another one that's, that's up there as, as far as reliability is called informed sport. So you go to informedsport.com. It's actually informed dash sport. Um, and same thing, you can search for registered products. And you can know that it's going to be free. It's going to be that, that someone is not going to have a quote banned substance. And I suppose maybe I should take a quick uh, step back and, and talk about banned substances. So how does a substance get considered for that the banned list? So there's there's three criteria, and it usually it has to meet two. If it meets any two of the following three things, it it will be on the prohibited list. So if it has the potential to enhance uh, or enhances sports performance. If it, if it represents an actual or a potential health risk to the athlete and or if it violates the spirit of sport. So if it meets any two of those three, it will get considered for the prohibited list. Some people kind of, that's come up a lot recently uh, or in the tennis world, you know, with, with the recent things people ask like, how, you know, what, what makes it, uh, what makes something prohibited, right? So if, it, if they mm-hmm. consider, if it, if it meets two of those three criteria, uh, because there's a lot of actual... Yeah, I, I mean, there's, there's it's some... interesting that it doesn't say illegal substances. <laughs> yeah, because some things are, are banned, like even insulin, for example. So for a type 1 diabetic, uh, that's, that's life-saving. And, and if, if there's a type 1 diabetic tennis player, then you can get what's called a therapeutic use exemption. And, and you know, it's a note from your doctor, and it's, it makes it okay. But, um, yeah, there are certain things that are, are, are legal and, and if not, you know, life-saving um, that, that are technically banned by WADA. So yeah, there's a lot of, you know, it gets, it's, it's a contentious topic, I guess. And there's a lot of nuance into it. But again, with that being said, the, the, um, so any, if we're talking about an athlete, that's going to be on the pro tour. These are the things they need to look for. NCAA has a, a similar, uh, band list. It's, it can be slightly different, but anything that's, that, you know, that, that's, if you're getting, things that are, have these two certifications, that should be a good place to, to, uh, to be. Um, there's one other good, good uh, resource for people to use, and that's a website called Aegis Shield. That's spelled A-E-G-I-S and then Shield. And what they do, and they have a mobile app, and uh, they, they, they don't check for label accuracy, meaning, but they check the labels. So if you can scan an, uh, any product, in the grocery store or in the supplement shop, and it will tell you if anything on the listed is prohibited from the NCAA or by WADA. So if there's any college athletes, this is a great resource. Um, again, you can either just search on the website um, and put the, put the product in. Because there's a, for example, there's a, a, a certain multivitamin from GNC, and that would actually be, would, would actually come up as, as, uh, as have a banned substance in it. There's testosterone, uh, it's called, GNC Megamen, healthy testosterone. So that, that would actually be banned. So it's something you could just walk into the store and get, um, and, and an athlete could be in a whole lot of, uh, you know, have a whole lot of trouble if they're taking that. So navigating this can be a little bit. And so then that brings it. So, so what, and I'm sure like people listening are thinking, well, gosh, there's so much, you know, nuance and, and things I don't know what to look for. I'll just skip, you know, I won't take anything. <clears throat> But I think then, some, you know, people can be missing out on some real, you know, especially at higher levels of tennis, there are some, some real benefits to be had by some smart supplementation. And those are? Uh, yeah, so, so recovering better, 
you know, again, uh, jumping higher. Um, and actually, you know what, I want to take one more detour before we get into that. There's one other really important resource, and that's a website called globaldro.com. So global, it's the Global Drug Reference Online is what it stands for. Uh, you can go to globaldro.com and it, you choose your nationality, so where the a medication uh, was purchased. So this is all about the medication. So if you go there, and for example, if someone searched for meldonium, you'd see that it's prohibited both in competition and out of competition. Certain, um, certain uh, uh, drugs, like Adderall is an example, where it's banned in competition, but it's not banned out of competition. So again, there's a lot of nuances, but this website is, a, again, a free website that can help you uh, navigate this stuff. Great. Um, Great. Yeah, so now I guess, yeah, we should talk about why people might want to supplement. So again, there's dietary inadequacy. So something like a multivitamin could be very helpful, especially with tennis. So you're doing so much traveling. Uh, there's a lot of plane rides often and, and you know, people might get sick. Um, taking enough vitamin D, especially for people playing indoors. Um, zinc, magnesium are things that people often don't get enough of. Uh, fish oil, a lot of, especially teenagers, don't eat enough fish. So there's something definitely to consider uh, if you're not eating salmon or sardines or mackerel or these fatty fish a few times a week, then fish oil could be potentially a good supplement. Um, and again, protein powder is, is, a, is an obvious one. Well, sorry, maybe not so obvious to some people, but um, that's, that's one that comes up a lot, especially with the high school athletes. Um, I guess the, the most, um, probably the most widely used supplement, maybe besides protein powder, would be like a sports drink. So we can, we can talk about that. And there, there are definitely good reasons to have a sports drink. Now, if, if your practice or match is only an hour, you know, an hour and some change, you probably don't need one. You certainly could have one, but it wouldn't be necessary. If you're getting past about an hour and a half of high-intensity practice or high-intensity uh, match, obviously, um, you will, you know, the research definitely seems pretty clear that you're going to feel better uh, with some, taking in some carbohydrates. That could be a banana. Um, that could be, again, some, some electrolytes or, you know, even... Uh, Gatorade. I think a lot of people dismiss Gatorade. Uh, there's sugar in it, uh, things like that. Well, the sugar, when we consume sugar during high intensity activity, so again, talking about, uh, you know, a higher level player who's playing, practicing at a, at a high intensity, uh, when you consume that sugar, it's being burned. You can think of it as, as kind of putting wood right on the fire and it's just being burned. That functions differently in our body when we're sitting around, if we're not active, um, sitting at a desk all day, drinking a Gatorade is definitely not advisable, right? But the difference uh, is, is huge, again, in the middle of exercise, on a, on a break of, a, again, a high-intensity practice, if you're uh, doing ball feeding drills side to side, these kind of things, you're going to get most likely a, a better uh, quality of practice, again, once it's past the hour, hour and a half point, uh, with some sports drink. Um, and Jeff, is that does that apply even to like our young players, like let's say seven, six, seven, eight years old? Um, do they need these drinks as well? And you know, at what age question. is it appropriate to yeah. start that stuff? Yeah, I mean, a six and seven year old probably probably not. It's it's probably not necessary. Um, I, I would I guess that probably the answer is no. Um, at what age? Uh, 13 or 14, you know, it's usually when, when the intensity can really start picking up a little bit, you know, um, I guess, I, I guess I could offend people by saying that, but, um, I, I think around puberty is probably a good time to start considering that stuff. Uh, it depends what the rest of their diet looks like and how long, uh, they're going to be out there. Again, it may, maybe, a, a a line could be, well, when you start practicing for two hours or longer, that could be a good, good way to consider it. Cause a six or seven year old is, is most likely not going to be out there. Um, for that long. Also, the younger kids are, are um, um, well, I was going to say that, yeah, I, I don't want to go too far down that road, but yeah, I don't think it's, it's super necessary. A banana or something could be good if they need a snack, but I think the length of time that you're practicing and the, and the total daily volume and weekly volume of exercise can have a, a play a role in that. Okay. Because I know, we you know, you go to these junior tournaments and even the youngest kids out there have their cooler full of Gatorade that they take on, out onto the court. Um, and you're saying in, in most cases that's unnecessary. Maybe just drinking water is a better option? 
I, I, yeah, I think it's for for a, a young kid like that, probably water, maybe a, a banana or some other piece of fruit or something could be beneficial. Um, yeah, I, th- I think there's definitely, again, you want to consider how long they're going to be out there um, uh, the in- and the intensity uh, at which they're playing at. So, you know, again, it, it, um, a, a lower, even at any age, a, a, you know, a less, the, lo- the higher the level of tennis, the higher intensity, the, or, uh, the higher the physicality becomes generally. So it, it's really a, a sliding scale. And it's so hard without thinking of the individual situation to say that this person should do this or that. Um, but I think that's a, that's a generally good rule um, to follow. And, and, and even so, even at the higher level, so, so um, if we think about, um, well, let's say the, the Bryan brothers who are about to play right now, now that this third round of Wimbledon is, is going to five sets, whereas uh, the first two rounds this year have been best of three sets. So that can change the shape of a match and how much the, 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 these guys need to take in. Uh, on the regular, on the tour, uh, the non-Grand Slam events, when the doubles are playing a third set tiebreaker or, you know, a, a super breaker instead of a full third set, matches are rarely longer than an hour, hour and a half. So that changes, the, the, you know, there's one fueling plan for a match like that, as opposed to a, a best of three Grand Slam match, uh, like at the French Open, where at least, um, you know, there, there's kind of a, you know where the limit is going to be, uh, when, or yeah, any slam where there's tiebreakers in the third set. And then at Wimbledon, which is best of five, and we saw that uh, what f- almost five-hour doubles match the other day. Uh, I think it was Murray and Suarez. Um, so that really requires a different approach to know. Okay, they could be out there for five hours. Totally different needs than uh, you know a, a tour level, um, a tour match that's that's an hour, an hour and a half, right? So while they they right. don't necessarily need calories uh, in their sports drinks at, for an hour, when when we're getting into two, three, four hours, the, the needs per hour go up quite drastically. And, I mean, is there really that much difference in the types of drinks they take out on the court? Is there a big difference between, yeah. let's say, a Gatorade and an Accelerade? Good question. Yeah, and, and with those two examples, Gatorade, Accelerade, Powerade, um, I think those are going to be more similar. Some of the drinks will have uh, some B vitamins in it, which can support energy production. Some of the drinks might have caffeine in them. Um, some of the drinks will have more sodium. And this is really a big one for, for what I typically look for. Um, these guys are sweating so much, again, uh, at, at the, um, well, at a higher level, not necessarily just the pros. I mean, you can get college and high school players that are sweating a ton. And the sodium becomes really important. Uh, Gatorade is, is not my favorite for a heavy sweater. Gatorade actually makes a version called Gatorade Endurance, which has, which contains a lot more sodium, and I really prefer that for for someone who's a really uh, heavy sweater. Um, so the weather can play a role into that. So if, if if it's a cooler, if you're in a cooler part of the world or it's a cooler time of the year, um, you don't need, you're not going to sweat as much, and the sodium content of a drink isn't as critical. Um, but when it's mm-hmm. really hot or, or you have someone who's who's a really heavy sweater, this can be more critical. So the the, the kind of subtleties lie in maybe the sodium content, um, again, some of the extra vitamins, things like that. Certain drinks are actually just electrolytes, meaning they don't really have very many carbohydrates or calories. Uh, what other drinks um, have, you know, in, in one bottle, let's say, th- there could be a greater amount of calories. So that can provide some more of the, quote, uh, gas. So if, you, if we think about the fluid and the electrolytes as the hydration, and then we can think about the calories or the carbohydrates in a food or drink as the, the gas for your gas tank. We want the right blend of these two. And what I do is consider what I, uh, well, not just me, but what people should consider uh, is, you know, that I, I, I think the kind of as the, the ratio of, of hydration to the gas in the tank, right? So we want um, on a short match, let's say it's a, again, we'll go back to the doubles example at, at a non grand slam tournament, but it's a really hot day. We want to make sure they're hydrating, uh, and getting enough sodium and electrolytes, uh, but the the carbs, the gas isn't quite as critical. I mean, we want some in there, but um, if it's a cold day, but but you might be playing a long match, maybe it's more important to get those calories in. So this is where you know the subtleties can can make a small, you might say mundane but meaningful advantage. Um, some matches it just won't matter. I mean, let's be honest, a six zero. 6-0 match, doesn't matter what the person supplements or eats or drinks, it's not going to matter much. But when you see these long, long matches, uh, you know, uh, the fifth sets or the third sets or the, you know, three-hour matches, that, that can be, I think, where 
sports nutrition really can, can uh, hurt or help someone. Got it. And so, okay, so that has kind of covered the on-court supplement use. So let's talk about off-court. And is there a difference between training blocks and competition blocks in terms of using supplements? That's a great question. Um, I would say yes and no. Typically, training blocks, you might be beating up your body a little bit more. So maybe someone's doing two-a-days. Um, and so recovering between, let's say there's a morning and an afternoon workout, whether they're two on the court or maybe one in the gym and one on the court or the track. Um, if someone's done a high-intensity workout, chances are that, that a lot of times you lose your appetite for a little while. This is where a, a sports recovery drink can be helpful to get in some carbohydrate and some protein to start refilling the gas tank, rebuilding the, uh, the muscles a little bit before you actually have the, the stomach for a, a large meal. That's, that's one aspect. And this another, another great recovery food um, is actually tart cherry juice, believe it or not. It, has a, it can really reduce muscle soreness and inflammation, and that's something that might be beneficial um, when, you, when you want to recover a little bit faster. Uh, now, there's further, I guess, a caveat or the nuances are that it's, it might – um, some of the muscle damage and the inflammation is actually a good thing, and that's what gets our body to adapt. So if someone takes too much, uh, too much anti-inflammatory um, uh, you know, pills or foods, that can uh, kind of uh, counter, uh, get in the way of some of the adaptation. So uh, tart cherry juice is a really good thing to reduce, uh, to improve recovery, but you want to use it strategically and not necessarily after every hard workout. Um, Okay. Uh, what's another creatine? I guess we should talk about creatine because I don't know, for some reason that gets everyone so kind of worked up. <laughs> um, I can tell you that the, the international society of sports nutrition calls creatine the most effective supplement for increasing high intensity exercise capacity. So again, if we're talking about a high level juniors, we're talking about college players or pro players, tennis is high intensity, right? So if we want to increase high intensity exercise capacity, this actually seems like a very good supplement. Um, it can improve repeated sprint ability, uh, recovery from injury, can actually decrease injury incidence, um, increasing power output, all, all things we want in a tennis player. Um, it is found in meat, so vegetarians would especially benefit from creatine. Um, also, I guess, uh, if, if we're getting specific for a second, creatine monohydrate, it's the cheapest uh, form of creatine. You'll see all kinds of other creatines marketed, but it's the cheapest and actually most effective or it's, it's the, has the most research behind it. Um, and just taking a small amount a day can be beneficial. Uh, there's a lot of myths around creatine, and this is one of the reasons I brought this up. Um, so myths can include, like, maybe someone will say there's not enough research available, might cause dehydration or water retention or kidney damage or it's banned. None of these are true. There's actually no scientific evidence that either short or long-term use has any detrimental effects when taken by healthy people. So then the obvious question I'm sure you're thinking is, well, what age is this appropriate? So right. I think there's a number of stipulations. Yeah. So I, I would say, you know, the, the things to consider would be we would want the, the child or the, the teenager to be past puberty. They would need to be in the, like ha having a hard training regimen. So someone who's, again, if you think of like, these academies or someone who's really, you know, college athlete or a, a, um, older high school athlete who's, definitely doing hard training daily. They should already have be eating a good diet because, again, this isn't going to substitute, but it can enhance a good diet. They shouldn't have kidney disease. Um, the, par the parental approval is something that, would, of course, would be important. Um, it should be supervised. And you should use quality supplements. So thinking back to what we talked to earlier about getting one that we know is free of banned substances um, and, uh, and the proper dosage. So also I think sometimes when people complain about GI distress or other issues, they might be dosing it wrong. So just taking a small amount each day, assuming those above points are met, and, and it's actually a safe uh, and, and helpful supplement. Um, I guess on that note, I think another issue in the high school world tends to be these, uh, what I think of as kitchen sink supplements. So if, if, if you go to GNC and there's like 20 different things that are all, all supposed to, you know, give you energy and, and this and that, um, that's, that's uh, kind of a, a red flag for me typically. A lot of times they'll have either banned ingredients in them. They will have extra stimulants. They will have things that are not listed on the label in there. They ha might have the wrong dosage of, you know, a, a, an effective dosage. They might list all these 
fancy ingredients, but you know, if the effective dosage is five grams of something and they include one gram, well, it's not going to do anything. So there's things to look out for there. But again, getting back to creatine, just the simple basic creatine is extremely cheap. Um, it's again, one of the most well-studied supplements. And it's something that I think should, you know, at, at a high level, again, I want to clarify at, for a high level tennis player who's training hard daily competing. Um, this is uh, one of the, the first supplements I would think of. And, and again, to clarify, because I think um, a lot of people hear high level and they look at their seven-year-old yeah. and they think, <laughs> my seven-year-old is training at a high level. They may be training at okay. a high level for age seven, but... Yeah, and that's what I mean. So, so, yeah, I'll reiterate a few of those points. But, again, yeah, this is why I think it's, it's such a contentious topic, all the stuff, and I think it doesn't get talked about enough, and, and I think to the detriment of, of people that could, could really use it. Um, but again, the athlete should be past puberty, probably training twice a day, um, competing regularly, um, you know, already eating well, uh, being free from any kidney diseases, you know, existing diseases. The parents should be on board, um, supervised by a healthcare practitioner, whether that's an athletic trainer or a, a dietitian. Um, again, choosing the right quality supplements and, and the proper dosage. So these are all critical. Um, but again, so if, if I think of someone, let's say a 17 or 18 year old, maybe a high school senior who's, who's looking to play division one college, you know, you know, so that's the kind of level uh, we're thinking of. I, you know, I don't want to put a minimum ability level, but that's, that's kind of who I would think of that could really benefit. And there are, I, I think a, that, that pertains to a number of people probably listening or, or um, that are being coached by people listening. Sure. Sure. So how do you gauge if you're getting any benefit from these supplements? Yeah, that's another good question, and, and there's the placebo effect is, is can be very strong. And what what that is for people not familiar, it's if uh, you know you think something that the, the the power of your mind to think to perceive something is working when it's not even really having an effect um, is called the placebo effect, and that that's that's definitely a thing, you know. And and on one hand, you can say, oh well, it's not doing anything; it's just in their brain. But if it's if they perceive it to be helpful, it actually you know, and it's, and it's not actually harmful, then it, it is actually in that benefit. Um, and, and if it's a cheap, something cheap, like some carbohydrate or, or again, creatine, which is about 10 cents a serving, if someone perceives an advantage, then, you know, it's hard to argue there. Um, but of course, yeah, there's no reason to, to waste your money and to, to, you know, pee out all of your, your supplements. Um, so I think there's, you know, you could try it for, uh, let's say two months, and, and then stop it. And, and the thing is, again, just to use creatine as an example, it does take a few weeks to build up in your system. So you won't see any difference for a couple of weeks. That's actually something I find kind of amusing because someone might take one dose and say, oh, I, I feel it. I feel great. And that's clearly a placebo effect because it does take a, a couple of weeks to build up and, and to really see an effect uh, at the same time coming off it. So if, you, if you've been taking it for some time and you stop for a couple, uh, one day, you're not going to feel any. It's fine. Even a two days, it takes a few weeks also to, 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 you know, leave um, to, for the levels to decline. So it's, it's really gradual. And that's, you know, I, um, that's, that's definitely a, an issue to consider. Um, sports drinks, you know, feeling like, oh, I need, let's say it's Gatorade or whatever your brand is. Um, and then you're, you're out of the country and you have to get a different brand. Well, there's, there's definitely some uh, a placebo effect or, or that could be going on. Um, so, you know, it, the best way would be to do a, a, a blinded study. So you could have a parent could, could swap out something, but no one's really going to do that. So I think it's, if someone feels better, then it's, then it's good. It's, it, or I, I, you know, it's a good question. And I guess you can tell as I'm stumbling, I don't have a great answer. Um, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I guess then a follow-up question is, can you overdo it on these supplements? Is there a way to take too much? Yeah, that's a great question. Absolutely. So if you're if you're looking for something to 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 be a magic bullet, you're probably looking in the wrong place. If you, if you want, if someone's looking for one thing that can drastically improve their the quality of their life and the quality of their tennis, it would be sleep. Hundred percent. You know, uh, all this. You know, I, I, I guess we I mentioned at the top, but this is I can't um, overstate that enough. It, and, and that's. Uh, Sleep, it will will absolutely outweigh, I believe, any, any supplement. Now, again, going back to the proper dosaging, 
dosage, so taking some carbohydrates on the court in the right amount. If you take too much carbohydrate on the court at, you know, per hour or, or in, in a given time frame, you will likely feel some GI distress. So, that's, so if we think about a few of the common supplements, um, uh, you know, too, too much carbohydrate, you'll feel probably get a stomach ache and, and there's probably no, no major damage. You might, you know, just be uncomfortable. Too much creatine, um, it's, I, I guess you certainly could do that if someone was doing it, taking it properly, meaning just one dosage per day at, at the specified amount then, you know, that's, they could, you know, uh, taking it for months or years is, is not going to be a problem. Uh, caffeine is another supplement that maybe we could discuss. Um, uh, caffeine definitely shows, can, can improve alertness and, and uh, cognitive performance. Uh, whether it's appropriate for kids is, is another good question. Uh, I think a lot of kids drink Starbucks, which, you know, these, these sugary Starbucks drinks, which I definitely cannot um, get behind. Um, but caffeine is a, is a supplement that I know pro tennis players will, will use. Um, uh, it, and it definitely you can take too much, and it's probably not going to be harmful, but you'll feel jittery and uncomfortable. Maybe it will ruin your sleep as well. Um, so I think, um, yeah, d- depending on the supplement, I'll, most things, if you take too much, you're just going to have an upset stomach. Another really good supplement, which can be also a food, are, are beets, nitrates, um, Beet juice is something that a lot of pro cyclists use and have used for years. Uh, what that does is it uh, opens up, it's a vasodilator, so it gets more blood to your working muscles. And that's got a lot of health benefits. And it, it again, can have performance benefits because you're able to get more blood uh, to, to the muscles. So eating beets, if you just eat too many, I mean, no one's really going to eat too many beets. It'd probably be tough to drink too much beet juice because it doesn't taste terrific. <laughs> Um, beets, there also is a, there are a couple supplements. There's a, a small shot uh, that's popular called uh, uh, called uh, Beat It. So it's like a little shot of beet juice, which can give you those benefits. And also there's a powder called Beat Elite, which is very popular among uh, a lot of pro sports teams, a lot of college teams. Uh, and that's just like it's like six beets in a powdered form. And that's another one. So that that can be a, a really smart supplement, I think, for a tennis player. Again, eating beets, uh, taking drinking beet juice, or taking uh, this powdered beet. Um, but yeah, if, if you take too much, no one's really going to take too much of that because again, you'll, you'll probably run to the bathroom if you take too much or get a stomach ache or just, it's not that tasty that you'd want to keep taking it. Um, so there certainly could be pr- some problems, but it, it, I would say it's very hard to do. And again, that would actually be up on my top few supplements that I would suggest. And while it's, it's a food, most people aren't eating beets regularly or eating enough to get a benefit. But again, a, beach, a, a glass of beet juice or a liter of beet juice can deliver quite a lot of beets. Um, and that's definitely something that, that I think tennis players are not taking advantage of enough. Yeah, it's the first time I've heard anything like that about beets. And I I love beets, but I never, I wasn't oh, eating them for, you know, anything other than they taste good to me. But <laughs> ah, hey, And they have, yeah, they have blood pressure lowering properties. Now, another actually important point about beets, in general, uh, and, and, and what, what we're getting are nitrates from them. So a number of vegetables have nitrates in them. Um, you don't want to use mouthwash, actually, because we ingest these nitrates, and, and it requires mouth bacteria to convert to, to nitrites and then to nitric oxide, which is really what's giving us the benefit. And actually, if you use mouthwash, it can, um, like an antibacterial mouthwash, it will kill some of the bacteria needed to make this conversion. So people that are taking these beet, uh, like beet elite uh, supplements, and then using mouthwash, they're really not getting the benefit. And at the same time, even non-athletes, um, I, I actually really, I always ask people if they use mouthwash and then persuade against it because you're missing a lot of the benefits of eating vegetables or some of the benefits of eating a vegetable uh, that contains nitrates if you're killing all your mouth bacteria. So you can see, it, 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 you know, it, it's again, blood pressure lowering. So someone with hypertension or prehypertension or a- any type of elevated blood pressure my first question is usually if they use mouthwash. So interesting. I've never heard that. I'm, I'm learning so much from you today, Jeff. This is awesome. <laughs> uh, and I guess we could other... talk. Oh, go ahead. Well, I would, yeah, I was going to say this. Another kind of supplement I think that could be beneficial. Um, is that where you were going with your next question? Or Yes. <laughs> okay, yeah. So, so my other 
kind of favorite. And again, this is not for everyone, but for a high level tennis player. And again, we'll, we'll kind of use our working definition as someone uh, maybe a 16 or older who's looking to play college tennis or, or, or beyond. Um, and that is, believe it or not, baking soda can be one of the most effective things. Now, uh, it's the, the technical term is bicarbonate, but literally Arm & Hammer baking soda. And I will tell you a couple things about this. It tastes, I think, pretty terrible. And if you take too much, it will definitely give you GI distress, meaning you, you might run to the bathroom. But if you take the proper amount, what it can do, it, it, it buffers. So it, it's a buffer, if anyone remembers chemistry, and it, it kind of, uh, when you feel that acid buildup, it, it reduces that. So anyone who's, you know, get done side to side ball feeding drills for long enough or, or you know, uh, long played a clay court match at, at, at that kind of clay court match, you feel the acid kind of build up in your legs. Um, again, not every match, a lot of these grass court matches we've been watching this week, there, there's just not a lot of long rallies. So this is kind of less of an issue. But if we're talking about a long grind of a match at a high intensity and you feel that acid build up, take, having taken baking soda beforehand can actually reduce that. So what it does is it allows, again, it's a buffer, and it allows you to kind of, uh, if we think of it in terms of kind of research setting, like repeated sprints. So if you had to do like a tennis line drill over and over, uh, sprinting drill, you'd be able to probably go longer at that before you, you know, um, you know, uh, give up or, or, you know, stop, can't, excuse me, you should be able to go longer without, before you, uh, you know, get exhausted. So and what's it, the proper it, dosage for that? Because that's such a weird. Yeah, that's, one. A, that's a good. That's a good question. Um, it goes by. Typically, we go to like milligrams per kilogram. Um, if we think about it, um, if if your your weight in pounds, um, we, we would typically do three servings. And if you took your weight in pounds, so if someone weighed 150 pounds, they would do about 1.5 teaspoons per serving. So if someone weighed 100 pounds, they would do about one teaspoon per serving and 200 pounds, two. So um, basically one teaspoon for every 100 pounds of body weight times or, or a little bit less times uh, three servings or sometimes even just two servings will get a benefit. And you should separate those by at least a half hour, if not 45 minutes or so, and take it with some food, like a, uh, some, some carbohydrates, so a piece of bread or, or a meal. I will warn everyone a couple of things. It does taste terrible. Uh, and again, in some people, you can definitely, I would start with just one dose to try it if you're curious. Um, and you might find yourself going to the bathroom. <laughs> again, I just like to reiterate these because, but with all that being said, it, it's a very well studied supplement as a supplement. And it definitely, uh, it's, it's, it's pretty reliable in increasing those, that kind of repeated sprint ability. So again, if we're thinking of the high, uh, a hard training, um, tennis player who, who wants that extra little few percent all these things again we're talking about getting that extra few percent um you know for many people sleeping and eating the right thing is is going to get them so much farther but since we're just getting um you know uh detailed on this particular talk um these are all these things that can give an extra you know percent here or percent there got it and so with the baking soda like would you just mix it into a glass of juice for instance, or, I mean, how are you trying to take it? Yeah, with, with water. Um, you can't really mix it with anything, or else you'll see it'll kind of fizz up and, and kind of, uh, it, it ruins the taste of pretty much anything. This is why it's not very popular <laughs> with people, but again, if, if, if I actually just talked to a pro cyclist yesterday who doesn't mind the taste. Um, so if you can get past the taste and you find the dosage and the timing that works for you, it can be very beneficial. I have a number of uh, cyclists that I work with that use it, some tennis players, I get to try it. Um, again, so if it's a 6-0, 6-0 match, uh, it's just not going to really do anything for you. But this is uh, a supplement that is uh, legal and cheap uh, and, um, you know, fairly safe. Again, the, the, the only thing, if you overdo it, you'll just find yourself, you know, having stomach distress. So I feel like there must be one of my listeners out there that's connected with the pharmaceutical industry that can find a way to put this stuff into a capsule so that well, you don't have yeah. to deal with the taste issue. Yeah, the, the problem is you'd have to take like 20 capsules. Uh, uh, so they actually do get it. You know, if you can look for bicarbonate supplement, uh, but it's expensive and, and yeah, you, no one really wants to pop, you know, 15 or 20 capsules at a time. Um, 
So, yeah. Got it. Okay. Uh, so if you're yeah. going to use the, the Arm & Hammer baking soda supplement, just plug your nose and have something tasty yeah. nearby to chase it with, I guess, is the, exactly. is the lesson. <laughs> yeah, put it in a small amount of water, plug your nose, and, and finish it with something, and, and take it with some carbohydrates. So, again, a piece of bread or, or something uh, will, will, will help things. And, again, three doses spread at least about 30 minutes apart, if not 45 to an hour apart. So it requires some planning. You know, again, this is something that's why this is definitely not for everyone. And, and, and you know, maybe the audience is too uh, wide to, to, to uh, you know, for a lot of people to benefit from this. But I think, again, the point of this show is su- supplements that we established. It's, they're, they're, they're definitely not for everyone. Um, but these are things that, that the pro athletes are using and, and, and high level athletes can use to really get a little extra boost. Um, and I think, I guess before we run out of time, uh, protein is probably another one. And that's probably where we should have started because the, the high, more, more typical high school athlete um, is maybe more likely to use a protein supplement. Um, proteins, that, that can be a fine supplement. There's a number of things to look for in protein supplements. Uh, well, one, again, thinking back to a, uh, the beginning where we talked about something that's free of banned substances and that there's label accuracy. So if it says 20 grams of protein, on the label, then you, you want to be getting 20 grams of protein in your product per serving. Whey protein is, is the, you know, kind of the go-to as far as a pro- post-workout supplement goes. Um, again, I guess I should pause quickly. You can get your protein from food, but how many people, I, I don't know a lot of, especially high school athletes and, and even adults, though, that get proper protein servings spread roughly evenly throughout the day. So that means, you know, just having a bagel and orange juice for breakfast and, and something small for lunch, and then all of your protein at dinner is not a good approach. So you really want to have your protein roughly evenly spread through the day. So in each, around 20 to 30 gram servings spread, ideally a few times, three to four times, or depending on, uh, on the person uh, through the day. So with that being said, again, after a hard workout, a lot of people just don't have an appetite to eat uh, a chicken breast and some rice, uh, for example, or potato. So a protein drink can be uh, you know, a, a good alternative. There's whey protein, again, is is the most common. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Sorry. I was going to ask, is there a difference in proteins based on gender? Because, I mean, I had always heard that, but I I don't know if if there's any truth to it. Yeah, no, I don't think that's that's valid. Um, The difference in types of proteins refer to the – so there's amino acids that make up uh, protein, as we think of it. So if you think about Lego blocks or, or different bricks, well, actually, we'll use the Lego analogy. So there's different, there's 20 different types of Lego uh, blocks that together make up these proteins. So a whey protein compared to, uh, let's say, a pea protein or chicken protein, the, 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 the kind of the, the types of the blocks that are being used or the amount of each block, uh, that's what will differ. And, and yeah, so after a workout, whey protein is really the king because it's the, the, the type of Lego blocks that whey protein is made up of really lends itself to rebuilding muscle or recovering from workouts. Um, other proteins can be, be helpful. Uh, milk, I mean, the, easy, the obvious one, I guess I should have started there. Milk has a mix of whey protein and casein. Milk is great after a workout uh, for anyone. Well, assuming they tolerate dairy. Um, but the, the type of protein and the type of carbohydrate it gives you and the electrolytes, milk is, is I would say, the best uh, and simplest post-tennis workout drink. Um, but again, if someone wants to get a, a protein powder, um, then, then whey protein is, is probably the best place to start. Okay. And for somebody that's vegan or vegetarian, yeah. You know, so okay. again, yeah, getting where do we go with that? The, yeah. So the, the protein needs of vegetarians or vegans are actually a little bit higher than the of that of omnivores, omnivores, because the quality of protein typically in, in vegetarian foods is a little bit lower. So you just need to eat a little bit more. So um, maybe, a, uh, you know, about 30% higher for, for vegans and vegetarians. There are some good vegan protein powders. Um, probably the most popular one is Vega brand, the Vega performance protein. That one I think is quite good. I, I do think it's expensive. And if someone uh, isn't a strict vegan, they, they don't need to get that. Um, but the, the, so the difference is in like a pea protein or a hemp protein, Again, it's a different set of Lego blocks or different uh, uh, configuration of the Lego blocks that make that up. And so if you might need 
20 or 25 grams of whey protein after a workout to, to maximally uh, rebuild, start rebuilding your muscles, you might need 30 or 35 grams of a pea protein or, or, or one of these uh, vegan proteins, uh, except for the Vega, which is formulated to be a little bit closer to a whey protein as far as the Lego blocks. Uh, so then you can get by with roughly the same amount. Does that kind of make sense? Yep, yep. And, I mean, I always read that in order to maximize recovery, you should have the protein source within 20 minutes of completing your workout or your competition. Is that still the kind of going time period? Yeah, that's that's a little – not necessarily. I mean, there is definitely, you know, within an hour or so is is a good idea. It seems that the total protein you take in through the day – and having it spread roughly evenly in three or four uh, distributions really takes priority. But now with that being said, if you're going to have three or four servings of protein uh, throughout the day, it, it's almost impossible not to have it within an hour of your workout just based on logistics. Um, so the, the kind of bodybuilding, you know, in the bodybuilding world where it's like the second you, you put your weights down, you need to get your protein in is definitely exaggerated. But you wouldn't want to go a few hours without eating. Um, there's really no good reason to do that. Um, so, you know, in, in practical terms, it'd be a good idea to get something relatively soon, but you don't have to like sprint to the, to the smoothie. Got it. Okay. So we've talked about protein powder. We've talked about baking soda. We've talked about ca- uh, caffeine. We've talked about creatine, multivitamins. What are we leaving out? Uh, that's a good question. Um, what are we leaving out? Um, again, fish oil can, can be beneficial um, if someone's not eating fish. Again, there's different quality of, of fish oil, so that's something to, you know, again, that's getting more nuanced. Um, we've talked about tonight, the beets. Uh, oh, I should actually just a little bit more on caffeine. Um, there is seems to be a, an appropriate dose of caffeine that can be beneficial, but it's not the uh, you know, the higher, the better. There's a point at which you can do too much caffeine. Again, not, not from a, uh, from a, to, to, to damage your health, it probably takes a really hot, uh, large amount of caffeine, but as far as your performance and your cognition and where you get, you know, start getting negative returns, um, there seems to be, you know, about one serving of coffee or, or you know, a, a large coffee equivalent, um, you know, so, so, um, some of these energy drinks, I guess we, we should maybe talk about those briefly. And the, the pre-workouts, I guess we should talk about. So this is a, a okay. not necessarily for tennis players, but in, in kind of the high school gyms, the, quote, pre-workout supplements are a big thing. Um, t- oftentimes, and I'll kind of generalize, they're just jam-packed with stimulants, um, possibly banned substances, but at least oftentimes a ton of caffeine. The, the caffeine might come in different forms, so there might be um, – or different types of stimulants in there. Definitely too much caffeine is not a good thing. So a little bit of caffeine, you know, a cup of coffee or green tea can be a very good thing, but sometimes these, uh, a lot, again, oftentimes in high school, but not only, um, in these quote pre-workouts are, are, are just packed with caffeine packed with things that again, that, you know, the, the kitchen sink supplements, so they don't have the right amounts of things in them and they, they jam pack a whole lot of things to make them look, uh, you know, more appealing. They'll, they'll give them some crazy names, like a, they'll have the, the, these proprietary names, so a beast mode energy complex or something like that. These are things I would, I would generally stay away from. I would actually r- usually run pretty fast away from. Um, and so <laughs> okay. yeah, these are definitely, the, again, high school athletes in, in the weight room, and, and the, the, these are definitely a thing. Energy drinks, so certain energy drinks, you know, these monster, or I guess I shouldn't call out too many by name, but you might see 300 plus milligrams of caffeine, maybe 50 to 60 or, or more grams of sugar. Uh, these are, again, things I would, I would stay away from. Um, so again, you know, it's, it's, it's the context and it's the individuality. So caffeine in of itself can be a good thing in the right amount. Carbohydrate, sugar on the court can be a good thing. Uh, but again, at the right time, so during high intensity exercise or right afterwards um, and in the right amount. So it's, it's, you know, it's really tough and there's, there's so many nuances and caveats. And, and I, even though I try to make these clear, um, you know, it's just, it's just a lot for a, 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 um, someone who doesn't do this for a living to consider. So I guess a, a brief plug for myself or anyone like me, uh, any sports dietitian, I mean, this is our job to, to know which supplements are, are free of banned substances, to know which ones are appropriate for certain people. You know, I think there's, um, again, there's, there's so much um, 
information to manage that. Why should, you know, someone else who doesn't do this, it's, you can't possibly stay on top of it all. So I think there's really, you know, finding a good uh, sports dietitian in your area or, or be online uh, can be just super beneficial because, you know, the baking soda, and I, I was almost reluctant to talk about it, but again, because this show was focused on supplements, uh, I, I feel like it's, it's, you know, a good discussion to have to let people know that this is a thing that can be helpful. But, you know, the nuances of, of trying it out, the timing, um, there's a pro cyclist I work with, and we've played with the timing. So, you know, even at that level, it's like, okay, we discussed, like, okay, try sp- spreading it out an hour apart or, or see what happens, you know. Um, so there's just so many small issues to, to really maximize. But it's worth doing if, again, you're going for that D1 scholarship or, or even D2 or 3, there's certainly um, – you know, there's a high level there. Or again, if, if a college player who's trying to take that next step uh, up to the to the tour level, there's there's these are things that can absolutely improve performance done the right way in, at the appropriate time, you know, with the appropriate uh, person. So I, I guess my, my kind of big take home is there are things that can be helpful. There are things to look out for, making sure you're getting the right things in your body and you're not putting uh, the wrong things. Either that could be harmful to your health or result in a, in a banned uh, supp- uh, substance. And it's, it's really important to kind of to work with someone and to, to really individualize it for yourself. Well, since you are in plug mode here, Jeff, um, please <laughs> plug your website. And if there are any like, governing body websites for registered dietitians or sports nutritionists that you want to uh, put out there, that would be helpful too. Sure. Well, thank you. Um, yeah, my website is eatsleep.fit. So that's www.eatsleep.fit. Um, as far as the, 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 the resources, I guess I, I should um, mention again, NSF for sport. If you Google that, you'll be able to find that for, for uh, sup- supplements that are free of banned substances. Uh, informed sport, so Google that. Uh, Supplement 411 is a great resource. That's from USADA, which is the U.S. Anti-Doping Agency. Um, there's um, another, the other one, Global DRO. Dot com, which is lets you check your medications, and uh, finally Aegis Shield, which can test, uh, which looks at just labels of things. So that that gets you part of the way there. That'll let you know if something is something uh, to be avoided, um, but won't let you know for sure. So these are good resources. Um, the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics is is the governing body for dietitians, um, and also so they also have some good resources there. Fantastic. So any last words of wisdom? We've got a couple minutes left and um, definitely want to maximize our time with you. Um, you know, you and I interact a lot on Facebook, but it's in a realm that maybe a lot of my readers and listeners uh, aren't part of. So I <laughs> I always feel hmm. like, gosh, we've had this great conversation online, and then I forget to ask you the question when you're actually on the air with me. So yeah, yeah, what absolutely. About so I, I today? guess. Um, I guess the, I guess the reiterating things. I think the, the the carbohydrates again. It's so the difference between consuming, uh, let's just say Gatorade to, to use that as the example of all sports drinks. Um, when you're you know sitting around all day, or if a kid is playing video games, absolutely not necessary. Uh, probably harmful. If we think about our carbohydrates inside our body, if you think of it like a bucket, okay. If if the bucket is drained, like after a hard workout, a hard you know a really a high intensity practice match, etc. The bucket is effectively drained or empty, and it's, that's the time to refill it, and we can refill it pretty harmlessly. When the bucket is already full, meaning when someone hasn't exercised, when they eat, you know, when they're eating too much and not exercising, and then you're pouring more sugar or carbohydrate in on top of that bucket, that overflow is where there's a real problem. Okay, so again, kids that don't exercise and are playing video games all day or sitting at a desk all day, not you know, the Gatorade and, and the sugars are not a good thing. If someone is walking around working out uh, twice a day and, and has a basically an empty gas tank or a half empty gas tank, these are the people that can use the carbohydrate, more carbohydrates, more sports drinks and, and things like that. So um, again, thinking maybe your seven year old is playing at a high intensity, you know, that, that can be, I guess, debatable, but that's the, the key difference is kind of, I guess, in a, in a word or in a sense, earning your carbohydrate. And again, people are, that are earning their carbohydrate oftentimes are neglecting it and not taking it enough. And that's uh, impairing their performance, impairing their recovery. At the same time, you have to be honest with our, how much you're earning and, and someone again, just drink, you know, having pasta all day and drinking soda and sports drink thinking they, you know, by at, because they jog two miles, 
um, that is also inappropriate. So really knowing the, the appropriate use of carbohydrates, of protein supplements, of any of these other supplements we talked about can be very beneficial, but I just can't stress appropriate enough. Got it. And, and I think, you know, it goes without saying that it's really important if a kid is taking these supplements that they become very body aware and learn their body signals as to when they need more, when they need less. And, you know, I would suspect that in your role as a sports nutritionist that that's something you help these kids with as well is, you know, really understanding the body signals and, you know, my legs are starting to cramp. Yeah. Ooh, maybe this is a time to start trying the baking soda thing in the future or something. Yeah, a- absolutely. Yeah, I've had uh, you know, there's one uh, a girl I work with. She's a, a uh, on the futures, you know, playing the futures tournaments. Um, she, you know, she wants. Okay, tell me how much exactly I should eat. You know, how many calories of carbs or how many, how much of this? And I, you know, we kind of got to the point where she she doesn't rely on that because you can't. It really depends on how your workout how hard your workout is, how, you know, you can't just give a, a number of calories. Um, it just really varies. So getting more in tune with your body is absolutely super, super important. Great. Well, Jeff, thanks so much for being with us today. To my listeners, thank you for tuning in. Don't forget to check out Jeff's website. It's www.eatsleep.fit. And we just appreciate so much you sharing your knowledge with us. I appreciate you having me. So uh, I look forward to talking to you again soon. Great. Thanks so much. To my listeners, have a great week. If your kid is out there competing, please make sure they're staying hydrated. It's so hot in so many parts of the country right now, so many parts of the world. So hydrate, 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 and uh, be sure to check out Jeff's website. We'll see you next week on Parenting Aces. Adding the choice of a crispy chicken BLT to Wendy's 4 for 4 is the biggest thing since rappers trying to sing. I got me out and I sound like a robot. But do you like the sound of this? Wendy's 4 for 4 now comes with a choice of a junior bacon cheeseburger or a crispy chicken BLT. From Detroit to Macon, I keep it crisp like bacon. Both are topped with crispy applewood smoked bacon and come with four nuggets, fries, and a Coke for just four bucks. Oh, yeah. At participating Wendy's for a limited time, meal includes small fries and a drink. Not valid in Alaska and Hawaii.